State Senator John Morlock is uh, from Orange County, Anaheim, Corona Del Mar, Costa Mesa. And I found that he had written a, a piece, which is online, uh, that uh, analyzes the origins and the effects of this Lanterman Petrus Short Act. I wanted him to come. We wanted him to come on and talk about it. John, how are you? I'm doing good. Good to be with you again, John and Ken. Uh, I imagine most people don't even know this thing exists. Can you explain in uh, so that everyone could understand the main tenets of this this law? Well, you you did a really good job in introducing it. But uh, back in the late '60s, uh, there was a study that was done, a dubious study that said that our mental institutions were cruel and unusual and harmful and, and they should be closed. And then, then they saw the movie One Flew Under the Cuckoo's Nest and thought it was a documentary, and and it wasn't. And so they said, we will move mentally ill patients out of the institutions and into community services and facilities. So they closed the institutions but never built the community facilities. And so they went out on the streets. And then after they went out on the streets, they committed crimes and went to the jails. So now the largest mental institution in Orange County is the downtown jail in Santa Ana, and the same is true for L.A. County. Their central jail is the largest mental institution in in Los Angeles County. And so we have failed as a state to build these facilities to provide reasonable care for families and loved ones, and uh, it needs to be fixed. And you're right, it's languished for 50 years, and every attempt that we've tried, and we did five bills this year that had to be scuttled because of uh, COVID-19, but they have uh, pretty much said that these individuals, even though they are severely mentally ill, still have civil rights, and they have to decide whether or not they want treatment, either voluntary or involuntary, and uh, otherwise uh, you can't do anything with them, so they're out on the streets. Well, we wouldn't let someone with uh, Alzheimer's or dementia out on the streets, and if we saw someone having a heart attack, we'd get an ambulance real quick if they were having it on the street. But uh, the the Democrats have pretty much said no. They have civil rights, and if they want to be there, that's their business, not ours. And but that was that was the second to... part of this LPS law: is it allowed people to live out on the streets, even though they're severely mentally ill, and nobody could force them into treatment except in the most extreme circumstances, and even then, mostly for only a short time. Correct. You have fifty one fifties and uh, similar uh, holds, involuntary holds, but for seventy two hours. We also have Laura's Law, which I've been working on for years, um, which also provides for a judge to tell a severely mentally ill person to uh, undergo an assisted outpatient treatment plan. Because once you diagnose them correctly and give them the proper medication, they can stabilize and normalize. And the debate with the Democrats always comes down to they have the civil right to act like a lunatic and terrorize people in the streets. Yeah, their civil rights are more important than ours. Do you and do you think they really all legitimately believe that, or is there somebody else bankrolling the opposition? Is there some other agenda that we're not seeing? Well, it's interesting because I did a bill uh, SB six forty last year, and, and it was heard again. It was a two year bill uh, early this this year in January, and it, it expanded the the definition of gravely disabled so that we could put longer holds, involuntary holds on people and get them normalized and stabilized. And it, it failed in the health committee in the Senate, not because I didn't, uh, because the Democrats voted it down, but because I couldn't get enough yes votes. Uh, a lot of the Democrats just sort of didn't vote. So I couldn't get up to four. So it's, so I can't say that they all oppose doing something for the homeless. They just are scared or, or just unwilling. Right. Who are they scared of? I, it's hard to imagine any reasonable person would be against this idea. So what, 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 who's pulling the strings here? Why would they be afraid no, to go on record? There's an organization known as uh, Disability Rights California, and they bring up lawyers and they just say, hey, we're going to sue you if you do this. And, and instead of saying, fine, sue us, we're going to treat these people, get them out of tents, get them off Skid Row, and get them normalized and get them back to their families. Because by the time they figure out that they can live a normal life on proper medication, they're going to look at us and say, why'd you leave me on the streets for so long? And and w- w- would the lawsuit have any legitimate basis? Is there something constitutionally that prevents the state from putting severely mentally people away and force them into treatment? 
Well, we seem to give disabled people some special rights. That's why you have group homes and you can't seem to do anything about them if they're disruptive in neighborhoods. So it, it would it would be an interesting legal case. And I apologize. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not into the weeds on, on the details, be, but it be, would be a, a debate over civil rights. Because we had this up until 1967. Right. So it, it didn't seem to violate the Constitution all those years, all those decades. And families appreciated the fact that, that if they had a severely mentally ill child that was now an, an adult, that at least there was a place where they could go and, and be protected and, and not have to face the outdoors and figure out how to survive. The Democrats can't possibly think this is a good outcome. And their stubbornness in refusing to, to, to change this law. I mean, I mean, look at what's going on in the streets all well, over sure the place. Mayor- I mean, they can't think they can't possibly think this is this is a good thing for us yeah, it's like mayor garcetti trying to push a rope right um you know you got the homeless but you don't you and you've got the solutions but you don't implement them uh, and and all the pressure from the public about the homelessness and the general chaos has doesn't move anybody i mean they've certainly got plenty of phone calls and emails and complaints and protests and they're getting yelled at all the time. I know they are, and it doesn't seem to change anything. I'm, I, it's shocking how resistant they are to this. And, and we even did a bill this year, uh, SB 1254, which would uh, provide something in between, you know, a stronghold and a, and a conservatorship uh, for, for people that are out on the streets that need maybe a relative to help them with certain items. It's a, sort of like a, 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 a conservatorship light for adults. And I couldn't even get that past the chair of, Senate Judiciary, Senator uh, Hannah Beth Jackson, she just felt that they had civil rights and we, this bill was not going to go anywhere. And a concern and it was like, an, like, a, like, a, like, a, like something that would be in between, like a, a compromise to get something done. Right, to have a family member take over their, the decisions on their care. Exactly. And they were against that. They were against that. And, and you know, it was really amazing when we did SB 640 and had the testimony a lobbyist showed up and he sat down to be one of my two witnesses and proceeded to tell everybody in Sacramento that his mother was schizophrenic and how we were missing out on figuring out how to help people. And it was, it was so moving and I didn't expect him to to testify. He didn't tell me, but he, he told everybody in in his community what his family life was like. It was very uh, moving, very personal. And he, and, and said, we've got to get moving on, on some kind of solution for these individuals. All right, John. Uh, I, I, I'm just stunned at how stubborn so many in government are. This is such an overwhelming problem. I mean, before the virus hit, the top issue among L.A. residents, 95% said the top issue was, was the homelessness. And it's, it's driven by mental illness and drug addiction. Almost all of them. Right. And, and everybody, well, but- everybody's upset about it. Everybody talks about it every day and can't get any movement on any level of government. It's fascinating in some perverse way. Well, if I get reelected, I'll try again next year. All right. Well, right. thanks for coming on. You bet. Thanks for having me.